In this video, I'm absolutely delighted to be putting this Zastava 750 through its paces. Uh, obviously, this is a Fiat 600, but it's one with a Serbian accent, for it was built in the former Yugoslavia. This one lived in Slovenia until 2009 when it came to the UK. And this is for sale. I am at Brightwell's Car Auctions here in Lempster, and on the 7th of December, this car will be going up for sale with all proceeds going to Médecins Sans Frontières, which I think is absolutely lovely because the chap who did own it has sadly passed away. But my friend Colin, who helped me build an engine before my own former Yugoslavian trip in Eli the 2CV, has been looking after this car since the owner passed away, but it is now up for sale here at Brightwell. So uh, yeah, you can come and grab a slice of Zastava action. So here we are, this fantastic little Zastava, or license-built Fiat 600, if you will. I believe Fiat helped Zastava set up its factory uh, in what is now Serbia, and they produced over 920,000 of these little rear-engine Fiats. They're designed by Dante Giacosa, predates the Fiat 500 Nova, and uh, has a water-cooled four-cylinder engine at the back, a very long-lived engine. This engine would go on to power even the early Fiat Pandas and Seat Abifas and things like that. In fact, we'll have a little look in the engine bay here. It's very familiar uh, if you've seen my Fiat 900T van video, because uh, effectively it's the same running gear. So we've got this little four cylinder engine, not taking up very much space here at the back, which I think is very impressive. A tiny little carburetor, but it's water cooled. Uh, unlike the Beetle and the smaller 500. So there's a little radiator here, fan, which sucks air from the engine bay through the radiator and either out through there or into the car. So I'm told the heater is quite dangerous because it sucks all the fumes out of the engine bay. There is a thermostatic flap, which I would love to show you, but I don't think I can easily, under the car, which when the engine is up to temperature will open and allow fresh air to come in and that then gets blown through the radiator to keep things nice and cool. Not the best place for a radiator in a water-cooled car up at the back, but somehow they made it work. I've got the air filter here as well. Even, even got a little expansion bottle. So uh, yeah, very, very nicely done. Intricate belt work for the dynamo and this separate um, cooling fan. Really rather jolly, I think. So originally um, there were 600cc but pretty soon people wanted more power. You know, parts of um, Italy are quite um, hilly. So there was a 600D, which used a 750cc engine. That's what's in this one. Um, hence, they were called 750s by Zastava in the end, I think a few years into the larger engi engine production. But these were in production right up until 1985. And latterly, you could get an 850cc engine. So that engine went all the way up to 900cc, I think. 903cc was the final incarnation of that engine when it was used in things like the Fiat Panda. But uh, yeah, let's go and have a look inside. It all feels very, very solid. I must say, I quite like that. Um, the previous owner has fitted some um, Recaro bucket, buckets. Are they Recaro? No, Ridguard. Okay, um, they're um, a little interesting to get in and out of. Massive wheel arch intrusion. But if I hop in oh, and close the door, Clang. There we go. We've got a uh, Voda over this side. Uh, Go Gorivo. I, 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 I apologize for my terrible Serbo Croat. Uh, Dinamo and Ulje, which I guess is your oil. And uh, some warning lights. It doesn't tell you what those are. Some switches. It doesn't tell you what those are either. I believe that one's wipers. Uh, that one's lights. And then you control the lights further with this little stalk here. That one's for your indicators. I've uh, got choke control on the floor, but we've got key start, unlike the Fiat 500. So we've just got the one lever for the choke. The gearbox, I'm told, is a little interesting and has some additional springs to try and help you find the gears. Got a dinky little throttle pedal down there, brake, clutch, and uh, key start. How fancy. This switch apparently for the front fog lights, this button for the washers. Little storage shelf, but you know, we've got little mats in there as well. I can't really do a rear seat test, but I don't think I would fit there anyway, especially with these bucket seats. But the car does come with a load of spares. It does not come with my backpack, I'm afraid. But yeah, it's all very simple and slightly austere, but um, very nice. We've got opening quarter lights, 
uh, winding windows, nice action on those. And uh, now we should get out and inspect the luggage compartment at the front. Uh, I believe there is a release lever under here somewhere. There we go, that sounded like it. Out we go folks. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of a squeeze getting out with those bucket seats. And then under here, we need to ping that backwards and up pops that. So here we find the spare wheel, battery, fuel tank, and not very much storage, but you know, original jack. Screen wash. Oh, that's good to know. Um, so uh, maybe the screen wash doesn't work very well. Uh, we've got a backup system. That's good to know. But yeah, here's the Zastava badge. And of course, Zastava would go on uh, to produce cars like the uh, the, the little um, boxy 4555 uh, model. I think there was a 65 as well. Uh, the Corral, as it was sold at home, they were sold in America as well. Uh, under the Hugo brand, and of course the Florida, which we got here as the Sana. Uh, those two cars were in production until 2008, when sadly Zastava went to the wall. It never really recovered from the um, Yugoslavian war, uh, that civil war that tore the country apart, and there was much bombardment of the factory. So after that, they really struggled to really keep things going. It's amazing they lasted to 2008. Uh, I just need to release that. Now we can drop that and give it a push. Quality. So I think it's fair to say that the poor Fiat 600 is one of the most overlooked, criminally overlooked cars uh, of all time. They sold over two and a half million, I think, Fiat versions. But like I said, they were licensed all over the world. Even these Astavas apparently were licensed to Turkey and were built there for a time into the 1990s. There were so many of these cars absolutely everywhere. Yet very few people want to own one, and that, I think that's very sad. We look at the love for the little 500. I think in its own way, this is just as cute, but a far better prospect. We've got three synchronized gears, although I'm told third is a bit interesting to find. We've got water cooling, so it's just a little bit more refined. We've got away from the um, Brightwell's offices just to get a bit more open road. So uh, let's see what this little Zastava is like. I've been warned about the gearbox. But uh, is it as bad as I've been told? Oh, lovely gearbox whining first. No synchro mesh on first. Seems happy to rev. Third gear, not a problem at all. So it's not a rapid machine, but compared to a 500, it's a performance machine. That's 50 miles an hour already. Getting a bit revvy as we approach the dizzy heights of 60 miles an hour there. Steering feels a little vague. So I think we'll stick to 50 as a bit of a cruising speed. Uh, give it some wash and wipe. And uh, oh, not a brilliant performance I'm afraid. We've got a triangle of doom going on. You can't see it, I can. Oh yeah, the steering is... You have to saw at it a bit. Give the brakes a test. Oh, oh, that's good. Now I can probably leave it in fourth actually at 30 miles an hour. That's not a problem at all. And in theory, I've got the heater on, I think, but it doesn't really feel like it. I might experiment with that. I might have to turn it that way. Does that bring more heat? So like I say, the heater system, very rudimentary. Basically, the air gets blown through the radiator and into the car. I'm told it can get quite fumy. Yeah, the ride isn't too bad. It, it's not overly compliant, but it feels tough, like it could handle some pretty rough roads. But yeah, this is full of so much character. I must say, I like this a lot. Oh, hello. What are you doing? Just slow me down enough to lose my precious momentum. Thank you. about quite merrily and with uh, the benefit of three synchro mesh gears second third and fourth it, it you haven't got the stress of trying to execute a, a perfect double declutch it 
Yeah, it's a lot easier to drive. I think this is more akin to a Morris Minor in terms of driving than uh, the Fiat 500. Albeit the noise is all at the back because that's where the engine is. Steaming up a bit, I'm going to go for some ventilation there. These quarter lights are brilliant. They don't let too much cold in, but they tend to get the air circulating enough to cool down. To warm up, rather. Dimis, that's the word I'm looking for. This really is a jolly little car. Strange to think, isn't it? This was a car, they were everywhere for a time, but they just never generated much of a following. But easy to get parts for, I guess, because so many were sold in, um, in the former Yugoslavia. I believe there is a very healthy support system in place for them. There we go. We'll jump out of third if you don't get it absolutely bob on. I've driven quite a few Eastern Bloc cars and I think this is one of the best genuinely it's not the fastest but um, in terms of how it feels most of the former Yugoslavian cars I've driven sort of feel like they're about to fall apart my old set I include in that unfortunately uh, I'm going to go that way I don't know where this goes woohoo let's find out together oh break oh no mud I don't want to go through mud Oh, this is the perfect car for bombing around these sorts of roads and if you're worried about left-hand drive just don't be it's not really an issue oh no more mud <laughs> i'm going to do a separate video having a look around some of the other cars brightwells have got for sale so uh, watch out for that that will be coming out very soon that engine is so fierce just willing to rev Oh yeah, we're definitely getting heat and fumes in here now. I think I will leave my little quarter light open. And this was a hugely important car for um, Yugoslavia. They were very, very proud of it. And uh, I think that's right. I think they had a lot to be proud of here. Sure, they didn't develop the car. It was all done by Fiat. And even the engine size increases were driven very much by what Fiat was doing. But... Uh, yeah, this got an awful lot of Yugoslavians on the road. And I can understand why there is love for this little car. It just feels so willing as well. This is joyous to drive. So there we go. That was the uh, really rather delightful Zastava 750 looking absolutely tiny next to my Australian beast here. Uh, like I say, it's in the auction here at Brightwell's Classic Cars, auctioned in Lempster, but uh, don't turn up, it's an online auction. So uh, it's a five day auction. It starts um, at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. And I think this car is due to finish at some point on the Wednesday. It's lot number 92. So sensible reserve and a lot of fun there. So go and check that out. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Colin and Brightwells for letting me come to play with this delightful little car. And I'll see you in a future video. Farewell. <laughs>